Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Big John, aka the Amazing Fasting Fat Man, aka the Incredible Shrinking Man, aka the Coach. That's right, you guys know I am indeed a fasting coach. I want to thank all you guys who went to the website. I've spoken to a lot of people who've taken advantage of uh, the free um, coaching session and as well as signed up a lot of people who's interested in um, being coached by me. And I thank you for having the faith in me um, to get you to your desired goal within the next three months. We have a lot of work to do and we're going to get it done. And I can't wait to, uh, of course, with your permission, I can't wait to showcase your progress on this channel so that we may inspire others uh, to go down this path. All right, guys, I am back to being 100%. Uh, um, the cold didn't last that long, but you know, um, because of the new fasting business, I'm feeling calls all day along with wrapping up my old business. So pretty much I'm like bogged down, but you know, I'm always gonna find time to talk to you guys. Anyway, it's been a while since I weighed myself. So let's go to the scale and see where I'm at. I do believe it's been about three weeks since my last weigh-in. So let's see where I'm at. Hopefully I didn't gain. Two seventeen point four. Two seventeen point four. Okay, two seventeen point four. And I do believe last time I weighed myself I was two twenty two. So I've lost basically five pounds in three weeks. I mean that's very slow for, you know, the type of uh, weight loss that I've been exhibiting um, between the two fast and the OMAD, but I'm not complaining. I'm losing weight. And remember what I always tell you guys, the scale either goes up, it goes down, or it stays the same. And out of those three, I'd rather it either go down or stay the same than ever going up. Um, I've started going to the gym. Um, I have a personal trainer. I'm trying to get bulked up, so I've been hitting the weights um, I haven't really been doing cardio as much as I should, but I'm going to start increasing the cardio. I've been primarily focusing on trying to, uh, bulk these babies up, you know, cause I really do want to get that six pack by, uh, this time, uh, next year. Um, also, like I was saying before, um, I'm talking with a lot of you guys in the capacity of a fasting coach. And again, for those of you who have the faith in me, thank you. And those of you who, who um, who aren't aware of it or haven't seen the website yet, it's uh, aka thecoach.com. It'll be on the bottom of the screen, aka thecoach.com. Uh, check it out. I offer a free session to get you guys started on fasting. And of course, if um, you're having difficulty with um, maintaining the regimen, then you could always hire me as a fasting coach. I'll help keep you accountable and help you keep you keep help to keep you focused. Um, Okay, let's go into um, one of the questions that I was asked uh, pertaining to fasting. And it's something I've covered before in the past. A lot of people have uh, trouble getting started with fasting. Look, the best thing you could do is do intermittent fasting until you're ready to go into a fasting regimen. Like even I, I didn't jump into the fast out the blues. I didn't just start fasting and went 150 days. What I did was a three week intermittent fasting regimen with a uh, four hour eating window. And I have to say, that's what got my mind and body ready for the fast. My body was used to being in a fasted state. So by the time I was fasting, I was only hungry on day three and four of the fast. And that was back on uh, January, uh, January 4th and 5th of last year and I have not been hungry hungry ever since like hunger has completely been gone as a matter of fact when I jumped into my last fast because I was doing OMAD for so long I enter it with no problem seeming seamlessly I just jumped right into the fast there was no hunger the body was just used to it no cravings whatsoever now again um, the thing we ex we go through as um, uh, recovering foodaholics and actual foodaholics is um, our craving, our mental craving for food. But I have to stress again, you have to fight it one mental battle at a time. Like your willpower, your ability to say no, it has to be exercised. You have to go through the trial and tribulation. There isn't a magic pill 
that's going to make you stop craving food. Even I crave food when I was doing the um, intermittent fasting regimen. I did crave food. It got better, but that first week was torture because I kept trying to tempt myself to eat outside of my eating window. And when I started fasting, the mental hunger didn't go away until after like the 20th day or so. So mentally, for those 20 days, I was constantly telling myself, no, no, no. And the way you do it is kind of simple. Like, what is it exactly that you're trying to um, break your fast for? What food is it that you're trying to eat at that moment? And then you ask yourself, well, how does that food taste? The thing is, you know how that food tastes because you've eaten it before. You've eaten it all your life. So it's nothing new. It's going to taste the same as, as, as it has always tasted your whole life. So you make yourself a deal. Like if Martians come out or aliens come from out of space with some new cuisine that you've never tried before and they're going away in a couple of days, then fine. Break it fast for that new cuisine. But if it's something that's been around and you've had all your life, you already know what it tastes like. Just tell yourself, I'll wait till after I'm done with the fast. Or I'll wait until my window open up. Like if you're having a craving for, say, I don't know, pizza, right? And you're you're four hours out of uh, your eating window. Then you tell yourself, you know what? When tomorrow come, I'm going to eat that pizza during my window. The funny thing is tomorrow come and you probably won't even crave the pizza. It's just your mind playing tricks on you, trying to get you to give in to your addiction. Always show your addiction who's boss. I don't care if you have... 15 five minutes to go until your window open up a lot of times we'll tell ourselves well you know what i got like 10 15 minutes to go let me open up my window now i close it 10 15 minutes earlier no don't do that don't give in wait until your window actually opens up because now the request is coming out of your desire to eat food and that's just your addiction talking you're not hungry you just want to eat quicker than normal so you as yourself will trick yourself into giving in here and giving in there and before you know it you keep on compromising and giving in to yourself so stay like a rock say no I'm not gonna have that right now I'm gonna wait the five minutes the two minutes until my window officially open now let's say a friend comes from out of town rings your bell your window hasn't opened yet it won't open for a couple of hours and you haven't seen this friend in a long time it's a surprise visit and they tell you look I'm famished I want to run out and get something to eat do you want to come sure change your window see that's something different that's a unexpected uh, surprise that's just life happening so you moving your window is not done out of greed or out of your body trying to trick you into giving in on your regimen you moving your window is about adjusting to life and one of the ways that you'll be able too intermittent fast you'll be able to keep whatever regimen you on is by adjusting to life you know you have a uh, a party to go to with your spouse on a friday night so you know you'll be eating at the party then don't eat during your window move your window to when the party starts so you could eat comfortably during that party there's no problem with moving your window i had someone who told me because this isn't the first time i spoke about this i had someone tell me oh no you should always be strict with your eating window why that's like a recipe for disaster like they, you know life isn't strict like that there's always like nobody even if you eat normal nobody really has to eat at the exact same time every single day sometimes you adjust sometimes you don't get a chance to have lunch you miss your lunch sometimes you have a chance to have breakfast you miss your breakfast life takes over so that's the same thing with your eating regimen like fine for the most part you have a set period of time during the day that you eat but sometime if you need to slide the window up or down accordingly, just slide it up. And then the next day, you open up at the regular time. You know, now, if you're water fasting completely, then there is no window to open and close. And pretty much, if you're able to fast past about 30 days, it becomes much more easier in that, see, when you're fasting three, four, five days, you could always break your fast. And some of us could break it unhealthy. And nothing's going to happen to us adversely because... We haven't gone that long um, with our food, but after about 30, 40 days, it's a little bit harder to just throw anything into you. Your body can go into shock. Like one of the best things about fasting as long as I did is when I reached around 40, 50, 60 days, like the temptation for food, 
I mean, like I said, the mental temptation went away around 20 days or so. But part of that reason was because I realized that in order to stop fasting, I'd have to actually plan to stop fasting. I'd have to plan out a careful refeed in order to stop fasting. Otherwise, I could send my body into shock. And the longer I went, the more I realized, look, if I even took a bite of something, I could literally die from it. And the whole reason I was fasting was so as not to die so I could be in my son's life. So, like I said, it was easier to go even longer fasting because I was fasting. I mean, I could have easily done 180, 220 days because the the further you, you stay away from food, the further your last food was, the longer you've gone without eating, you are so used to not eating that it's really not anything you think about. You've adjusted. You go through the activities of daily living. Everything is pretty much the same, um, with the exception of you eating. You know, my eating was taking my, my supplements, and that's what I, what I look forward to, because that's when I would get some flavor in my mouth in terms of the um, electrolyte powder and the, um, and the uh, pink Himalayan salt. That's when I would actually get flavor in my mouth. So I look forward to that. And when I drunk the apple cider vinegar, that was actually after a while. That was like having wine, you know? But anyway, guys, I'm not going to keep you. Um, again, I've lost about five pounds in three weeks, and I am not disappointed at all. You know, I've been lifting. I've been trying to bulk up. You know, I haven't been able to walk like I used to because it's been very cold in New York. And like I said, you know, I didn't want to take my kid out because I wanted to get cold, get a cold. He got a cold anyway. It is what it is. The whole household got sick, but we're all better now. Also, I'd like to thank all of you guys who sent me um, different home remedies to uh, to chase the cold away. Um, you know, I did do a few of them. Um, I don't know how effective they were because I, like I said, I wasn't as sick as they were, and they started to get better before me anyway. But like, it never got as bad as they had it. And I attribute that maybe to like my new, you know, uh, OMAD lifestyle. I don't know. Because I know when I was fasting, I never got sick, never got a headache, never got anything. So there's something to this fasting thing. But um, anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe. Um, remember, I am your fasting coach for all things fasting. So come to uh, akathecoach.com and let me expand your fasting game. Take care, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.